Before you decide to up and move to St. Petersburg, Florida, I think there are a few things that you really need to take into consideration before making that move. So in this video today, I'm going to talk about the seven things that you should know before relocating to St. Petersburg, Florida. All right, let's get to it. Everybody. I'm Emily. I'm a licensed real estate agent here in the state of Florida and I live in the Tampa St. Pete area and this channel is dedicated to all things living, working, playing, sleeping, eating in the Tampa St. Pete area. If that resonates with you, please feel free to hit that subscribe button and don't forget to click that little notification bell. That helps me out a lot, but it also lets you know when I'm dropping new videos weekly. And if you have any real estate related questions, I'd love to help you out, but I can't help you if you don't reach out to me. Those links are below as well. Feel free to email me. You can call me, you can text me. But if you have more specific real estate questions, don't hesitate to jump on my calendar. Uh, my calendar link is below as well. And you, we can talk for about 30 minutes and do a little deeper dive into some of your questions and needs and goals. So today I'm really excited to share with you my seven things I think you should know before relocating to Florida. There's a lot of information out there and there's a lot of rumors. And I even notice it with my family. They'll make statements about flood insurance or flood zones, things like that. And all of that, I'm as a real estate agent, I'm like, you know that's not accurate, right? So today's video, I really wanted to dive deeper into some of the things that I think you really need to take into consideration before moving to St. Petersburg and give you a little bit more, some resources to give you the most up-to-date information as you're preparing for that. There's a lot of things you need to consider when you're thinking about moving to St. Petersburg, Florida. It is surrounded by water. And so flood zones, flood insurance, that sort of thing is usually something people start to ask me about. What I find interesting is a lot of even Floridians seem to have a lot of misinformation. So I didn't want you to go out there on your own and try to get some information just from locals who aren't deeply embedded into the real estate business. So I have my finger on the pulse of things that are changing and I've got some changes that I want to tell you about. So this video, I want it to be a little bit more of a resource for you as you get ready to relocate. And again, don't forget, you can always reach out to me personally and I can answer those questions as well. But the first topic on the list of the things you should know, number one is going to be your flood zone. If we head on over to the PinellasCounty.org website, it has a lot of information on flood maps and flood risk information. I highly recommend that you scroll through the different topics when it's uh, in regards to flood zones, flood maps, evacuation maps, storm surges, and the like. You can also go over to FEMA as well, and they have a lot of information on flood zones and information you should know regarding that as well. Pinellas County website again for emergency, emergency management. It will give you everything you need to know about surviving the storm, how to prepare ahead, pet preparedness, what to do after the storm. I su highly suggest everybody read all of these documents. Get yourself um, an evacuation checklist, a pet checklist, important phone numbers and websites. Again, if you are not used to living in a hurricane flood zone, it is important that you educate yourself before moving to the state of Florida. I always recommend that my clients get together a hurricane kit. You want to make sure that you have everything you need in time for the storm. Because the thing is, when you move here and you're not used to such thing as hurricanes, you might be used to bad weather, but it's different when you're in Florida. So you need to know all the specific things you might need in case the worst case scenario happens. So just get prepared. Things you need to know number two, flood insurance. So flood insurance premiums used to be determined by your flood zone. Well, that all changed in October of this year and FEMA rolled out their new risk rating system that takes into consideration a property's foundation type, structural elevation, as well as any cost that the structure may need if uh, it incurs a hurricane. So damage costs basically. So right now I could tell you the average, you know, cost for flood insurance. It can be anywhere from 500 to $2,000, 
but really honestly that's all about to change and it's going to be really more based on the structure so keep that in mind things you know number three property taxes and homestead exemption so the good thing is florida property taxes are still below the national average we're right now at 0.83 percent and also we offer something called homestead exemption which if you have a home in florida that is considered your primary residence you can get an exemption on your property taxes up to about fifteen thousand dollars now i always recommend for my clients to do that think about doing that at the beginning of the year you only have to do it once you have to fill out all the information online again work with your agent or me i can help you I show you where to go to do that you do it once as long as you're staying in that house for a year, two years, three years. It's not something you have to do every year, but I highly recommend it. It will save you a lot of money on your property taxes. But if you're curious about the property taxes on a specific home, I highly recommend you going to the Pinellas County Appraisers site and checking it out for yourself. It's very easy to fill out the tax estimator and it will give you pretty close to a good estimate um, if you're looking at a home with 300,000 or 500,000, you're going to be in that four to 8,000 in property taxes on average. Things you need to know. Number four, historic homes and the preservation of those homes. So St. Petersburg is rich with its Florida history. All of Florida is. We're very proud of our history. Ponce de Leon came and discovered Florida. Yeehaw. Welcome to the beach. But in St. Pete, they take it very seriously. There are some historic homes that have that historic landmark designation, and there are some homes that are still waiting for that designation. So if you're looking at homes that, that were made in a certain time period, you can check the website for what that designation requirements are. You might wanna check that out. There are some grant programs available to help you restore the home, um, but there's also some restrictions as far as what you can do to the home. So if you're looking for that eclectic feel of a historic home, but you, you're thinking of you know taking some things down or doing whatever kind of renovations, you need to stop and take a moment and check out the website. They have some guidelines on there. St. Pete business planning page. We're gonna scroll down. I'm gonna talk about the history and details. I'm gonna keep scrolling all the way down to the certificates of appropriateness for qualifying historic properties and allow streamlined design review for certain rehabilitation and restoration projects. So there are forms and application page there to give you a little bit more insight. There are potentially eligible properties so that you can identify if your property can be eligible for a local landmark designation. Things you need to know, number five, traffic, commuting. St. Petersburg kind of sits on its own little island to the west of Tampa Bay. So the bay separates Tampa and St. Petersburg and everybody shares the Gulf water. But we have bridges that uh, connect St. Pete to Tampa. So if you're a commuter, you need to understand the three bridges. So there's three bridges you need to consider. The Courtney Campbell Causeway, the Howard Franklin, which is 275, Interstate 275, and it's the major bridge. And then below that is the Gandhi Bridge, and that connects the lower part of the main part of St. Pete, actually, in the south part of Tampa. And getting in and out of St. Pete and Tampa when there's traffic or weather can be next to impossible. If there's an accident on the bridge, you're going to be stuck for a while. If there's bad weather, especially if there's wind and hard rain, those bridges tend to shut down. You'll also notice there's US 19 that goes north and south up across St. Pete, up all the way to Palm Harbor, and it can even take you all the way north into Tarpon Springs. But if you need to get to Tampa, your only way in is that Courtney Campbell or 275. And so everybody takes 275 because it connects to all the major interstates. And especially if people live in South Tampa or downtown, it's just an easier route. Don't forget the January starts season here in Florida, which means the snowbirds start to come south for the winter and that starts to log jam all of our interstates. So you have to keep that in mind. Sometimes your commute times can double just because people are here for the winter. Things you need to know, number six, the weather. 
Now you'd think, Emily, this is a no-brainer. It's sunny all the time. Not so much. In the summertime, it rains every day, which again, we have the delays in traffic, it can just ruin your commute time, and it can make it feel like it's a sauna outside. And you also then need to carry an umbrella with you everywhere you go. Keep one in the house, keep one in your car. I personally own about three, and they kind of shift throughout my either my purse or my, my bag or my car or my garage. If I can't make it to the house in time with my groceries and I forgot my umbrella, happens all the time. Also, the heat is oppressive. The weathermen, will, weather people, I should say, will even call it oppressive. This past summer was one of the hottest summers I think we've had in a long time. And it wasn't just hot, it was humid. Walk out the door, drenched kind of humid. And that's something to think about as you're going about your day, you need to stay hydrated. I personally keep a big old water bottle in my car and um, I, you dress appropriately. Again, I think that goes back to why we're so casual here. It's just too hot to wear a lot of clothes. So we tend to be beach casual a lot of times. So just think about that if you're coming from states that have drier and cooler weather. It takes a while to acclimate to our heat. So I, again, I have a client that is uh, moving from Colorado and he just got here last Monday actually. And he's like, oh, it's so great here. And I go, yeah, you came when it got cool. We just started having a dip in our heat. And when, and when I say dip in our heat, we're in the high 70s, but we're, our humidity level is at 50%. So it's significantly different. It's like California weather right now. It won't really get too cold, but we'll have a nice break from the heat. And then by about March, you're gonna start getting antsy and you're gonna be ready to go to the beach and then things will get hot again. And then we'll be like, why, why do we like it here? It's so hot. Things you need to know, number seven. All right, we've hit the last one, my favorite one, bugs. I I'm sure you have bugs where you come from, but you do not have Florida bugs, I can promise you. We have some of the craziest bugs. Have you ever heard of love bugs? Or they call them March bugs? because they usually all come out in swarms. And I mean that, swarms in springtime. And they are mating bugs, so they attach at their mating points and they don't fly very fast. They're very passive flies. You can literally push them out of the way with your hand, but they can tear up the paint on the front of your car because when, they, when you're going through their mass swarms, they attach themselves to your car and they can take your paint off and windshield wipers, it gets disgusting. You end up having to wash your car, car quite frequently, so ugh, gross. And no seams. Listen, I'm allergic to bug bites, so I have a lot to say about bugs. I can get one little bug bite and it swells up this big. I went kayaking a couple weeks ago and it felt very pleasant out. I didn't even feel any bugs until I got home and my whole body was covered in these red welts. Those are those no seams. You don't really feel the sting until later. And then their, their venom, for me, I'm allergic to the venom and it causes a nice perfect storm of gross little spots. So, something to think about. I carry bug spray in my car, in my purse. So, along with my umbrella, I keep bug spray. Those are my two main staples of, and sunscreen. Those are the three things I keep in my car and in my purse when I'm traveling around during the day in Florida with the heat and the rain and the the bugs you can't escape them even now that the weather has shifted a little bit towards cooler times um, I'm still noticing some little bugs around they just don't want to die the good thing is when the temperature drops below 75 that's usually when the noceums tend to disappear so if you start to see them kind of creeping into your house you might want to lower the temps on your AC and see if you can't get rid of them another thing you have to think about that just happened to me recently I forgot that I'd had some chicken wrapping from some chicken I made and put it in my garbage can and guess what I got? Yeah, gross. I won't even talk about it. I can't talk about it. So you have to really be aware of the bugs and you don't want to keep your fruit out for too long on your counter. I personally like to let my fruit and my vegetables ripen on their own a little bit before putting them in the refrigerator, but I have to keep an eye on them. They have to be in a dry, cool space. Otherwise the bugs are all over them. Disgusting. When I was a kid growing up in Florida, 
I always would make jokes about that the roaches in, in Florida like smoking cigars going ha, 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 with this voice like you can't kill me ha, 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 I've been here longer than time you know and it's the truth our <laughs> roaches are like this big with wings they fly around they're not scared of you it's very hard to kill um, and it doesn't even matter I have an exterminator that comes quarterly I highly recommend you get an exterminator when you move here Trust me, you're gonna need it, even if you're the cleanest person on the planet, it doesn't matter. When there's a lot of rain and there's a lot of heat, they tend to just scurry in. It, you can't help it too much, especially if you've got some cracks in your foundation. It's just part of life here. So, ugh, roaches. And geckos. Well, they don't really harm us or anything. They're just annoying. In, where I live, you could be walking and 10 of them are scurrying at your feet. Sometimes when I'm jogging outside, it's the same thing. It's like the parting of the Red Sea of all the little the little lizards. Um, they also have little babies and they're teeny tiny and they're paper thin and they can crawl under your door and they can decide to live in your house. I've just grown accustomed to letting them live in my house and eat the bugs. They eat the bugs. It doesn't harm anybody, but you do have to get used to them. They can freak people out if you're not used to them. I just tell people, leave them alone, ignore them. They can't hurt you. They're not going to hurt you. They're cool to look at. They change colors, you know, all that kind of fun stuff. The kids like them. Um, but remember, if you try to grab them by the tail, you can pull that tail off. That's not fun. And then the tail wiggles on its own. <laughs> Let's not do that. Let's let our little critters do their thing. So that's it for bugs. Yay. All right, and the bonus I have to share with you, allergies. And the reason why I added this on at the end was because during trying to film this for you, I've had to stop and start so many times because I'll either have a sneeze attack or my nose is running and it's November here and it's just starting to get cool. And you would think we would have a break from the tree pollen and the ragweed and the mold spores. No, no. I am constantly on a Zyrtec and nose spray regimen year round. I get maybe a couple of months break from it but honestly it is ridiculous i have lived in texas where there is cedar fever and that was pretty bad not half as bad as what it is here and i had a doctor tell me well welcome to florida it's just the way that everything kind of blows through our state um, so if you have uh, a tendency to have allergies like me you might want to think about getting yourself on a program or talk to your doctor or allergist before heading down here I'm starting to think I need to go see an allergist myself. So if you have any tips, I'll take them. Allergies suck. Okay, well, I think that does it for the seven things you need to know before relocating to St. Petersburg. And I hope that some of my information was helpful for you today, especially when it comes to flood insurance, flood zones and property insurance. Uh, some of those rumors out there with people who think they know what they're talking about, you know, until unless you're in the market, you don't really know. So make sure that you're getting proper data from people that are in the know, like me, real estate agents. And as always, I really appreciate it if you'd hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so that you can be notified when I drop more videos, especially if this content resonates with you. And if you have any comments about this video or any information you want to share, please feel free to comment below. I'd love to hear from you. And if you have any suggestions, I'll take those as well. If you have any real estate related questions for me, please, again, don't hesitate to reach out. I really love helping people as they get ready to relocate and get set up and understand the market and just help you in general. It is really my joy in life. So my links are below. Don't hesitate to reach out. And again, my calendar link is below as well and you can get that 30 minute consultation and we can talk more privately about some of your real estate goals and I can help you where I can as well there. So guys, I'm really looking forward to shooting some more videos about St. Petersburg. I've got a couple more coming. Now that the weather is getting a little crisper, um, I won't be melting in all of my videos for you. We've got a, a couple of fun things to share with you. That'll be coming soon. So again, hit that notification bell so you know when they're coming down the pipe. And again, have a great one guys. And until next time, be kind to one another. Bye-bye.